Okay, carbs and lipids. Guys, this is a really boring lecture, but um, it's short, and I'm just kind of like giving you the basic information that you need. I didn't even have time to like come up with a fun background, so I apologize um, for the, the, the lacking in aesthetics that I have for this one, but I will, I'll make it up in content, I promise. So carbs and lipids, two of my favorite things. Um, this, when we talk about macromolecules, these organic chemistry, if you will, these organic biomolecules, what makes organic chemistry organic is that it has carbon in it. Carbon is the central element of, of life. Carbon has this unique ability to, to bond. Um, uh, it can form four different kinds of, or can bond with four different other elements. It can be stable. It is the jam, if you will. So we are complex organisms, right? We, when we talk about especially DNA, we're going to look at how complex our DNA is and how similar it is, but at the same time, these small differences make you know, huge differences, can result in huge differences. And carbon is the backbone of, of all of these things, of carbohydrates, of lipids, of proteins, and of nucleic acids. Um, it can, because it, 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 can, it has those four valence electrons, it can bond to, to many substances. And it can change, it has the, the ability to change the impact of what those new substances are, if that makes sense. Um, they can form, like it says down there, stable covalent bonds. Um, and that is a unique property for carbon. And that's what, it allow, what, al what allows it to make these different structures that help us live. Carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids, and nucleic acids are the foundation for life on Earth. Um, and they can do what they do because of carbon. Just know that. Carbon is, is um, uh, I don't know. Give me an example. I'm going to have you guys come up with an amazing example for like what carbon is. Carbon, you know what carbon is? Carbon is like the Biggie Smalls, right? Carbon is the OG of chemistry, of the OC, organic chemistry. I just came up with that now. Okay. So in addition to carbon, you're going to have what's called functional groups. And I've said this to you guys when you were working, and I want to explain what a functional group is, right? So you have... Um, for example, when you have like a carbon ring, like with our glucose, you have that carbon ring. Um, so you might have an OH, an oxygen and a hydrogen coming off that carbon ring. That's called a functional group. It's like an add-on. Um, and what that does, those functional groups change everything. They change the way the molecule can react and what it can function and what it can do and what it can't do. For example, if you have an OH, if you have you have a hydrocarbon atom, you have that carbon ring, you throw in an OE, OH, okay, well now you've created an alcohol, like an ethanol or whatever. So the addition or the subtraction of a functional group can change the function of that molecule. That's basically it. I just want you to know when I say, oh, that's a functional group, it means it's a group of elements, a group of atoms that are attached to carbon, the carbon base. Here we go. <laughs> Let me start. Guys, my love affair of car with carbohydrates started well back into the 70s. So they are, in some ways, they're, they're amazing. In some ways, they'll kill you, right? So carbohydrates are those building blocks, right? The monomers, mono meaning one, simple sugars. Glucose, we made glucose molecules. So you should know that glucose is, is a building block. When we talk about energy um, and cell function, we're going to talk about how glucose has to be broken down into energy. So that, that energy that, we, that our cells need, that our body needs, comes from the breaking down of glucose. So glucose is extremely important. Um, so you also can call the, sh the, the simple sugar um, a monosaccharide. And then you have your polysaccharides, which is many, or your disaccharides, which is two, um, when you link together these, these basic sugars. Now, glucose, fructose, sucrose, they're all very similar, okay? Galactose, they're very similar. So um, when I, I'm using glucose in, as an example, but you can, we can talk about those other simple sugars as well. Um, they, they have very similar properties. So when you start to make, when you start to link these together, you get complex carbohydrates, and those are the good carbs. Remember, think about the structure, structures and think about our body being able to process those. Glucose is a very simple molecule, 
okay? So it's fairly easy to break down, our bodies to break down. So that's why we have to watch our carb intake because if we have too much of it, then we store those, that extra carbs as, or we store those extra sugars as fat. Um, right, so you have the glucose, they link to other types of simple sugars and they form your polysaccharides or your complex carbohydrates. Here's my picture. So down there in the, in the um, lower left-hand corner, that's your glucose. Giddy up, right? There it is. And then what you have there, and you guys made these today, you made these in class. If you link a bunch of them together, you get a starch. Now there are four main polysaccharides um, that are important. Starch is one, uh, glucogen, cell, cellulose, and chitin. And these are just things, just know these. These are they have different functions. Um, some of them, like we know with the cellulose, right? We know that cellulose is in living things and it helps like with wood, for example, or building materials. Um, that that it, can, it helps to give it structure. The, the, the chitin is actually formed a lot of times in um, bugs who have like a hard exoskeleton. That um, polysaccharide forms... The, the, the chitin, which then forms that the, like the beetle, for example, their hard outer shell. Um, yeah, so that's it. So one glucose, many glucoses, you have your, um, your starches or your complex carbohydrates. My other friend is lipids. Now, lipids are your fats, okay? So of course, they're not going to dissolve in water. Um, they don't really have that monomer to polymer structure. So like we see with carbohydrates, we see that glucose is that base unit. It's that base structure. We really don't have that with lipids. Lipids are kind of, um, there's not one structural element. You guys probably saw when you were making your models that some people had a, a longer strand of lipid, some people had a shorter strand of lipid. They're both lipids. Whereas with glucose, you're going to have five carbons and an oxygen in that ring. Lipids, not so much. There's not a certain number of carbons or hydrogens or oxygens that need to be in um, a structure to make a lipid. So probably the most important are going to be your triglycerides. Um, so when we consume fat, we're usually consuming triglycerides. And triglycerides in low quantities are good for us. Our body needs a certain amount of fat. Um, a lot of times we'll see like marathon runners especially, um, and I've seen this with my, my friends and my, my family who've, who've run marathons. It's such an arduous training process that a lot of times they don't get enough fat in their diet. So they're, they're get, they get weak, they get sick, or they can't, oddly enough, lose weight. They kind of are hanging on to this weight because their body doesn't have enough. They're not in, consuming enough um, of the lipids to help facilitate you know, what, what, what their body needs when they engage in that kind of elite athletic activity. Um, however, if you're just like sitting on your, on your couch, you know, cramming the donuts, different story, right? That's going to be, you have to be very careful with your triglyceride number. And they can, your doctor, maybe not you guys yet, but when you get to be a certain age, your doctor will check your tri triglycerides and you need it to be at a certain level. Um, it's a lot like with cholesterol. If you have a high density cholesterol in your blood, Okay, you might you might have um, we might have a little situation here because that could interfere with the blood flow throughout your body. And there's our lipids. So you've got this glycerol backbone, okay, and then you just have your your th your three fatty acids, okay. That's basically what it looks like. Um, there are some additional lipids besides the fatty acids. There's steroids, phospholipids, and waxes. Steroids, we know, are um, cholesterol is a steroid. Our, some hormones are steroids, like our sex hormones, our testosterone, and our estrogen are steroids. Um, and our body needs a certain amount of steroids. Our body needs these hormones. The problem comes in is when you start getting your synthetic steroids. Um, your androgen, which I know is illegal now, but it used to be, it was a fake testosterone. Um, and I know a lot of athletes, a lot of in baseball, especially there's all these different like cousins of testosterone, like fake testosterone that, that athletes will use. And some of it can be, some of it can be detected. Some of it can't quite yet be detected. Um, so you're mimicking that, that testosterone. However, it's synthetic. It's not coming from your body. It's being made. It's a chemical that's being made outside your body, which is why you, we have some of the problems we have, AKA Sammy Sosa's 
not not his odd skin color choices, but rather his like really thick neck. If you look at Sammy Sosa in 1993 and Sammy Sosa in 1998, it's like who ate Sammy Sosa? It's like he's twice the size of, of the person he was. Um, you then have your phospholipids, which make up our plasma membranes. So know that. Know that we'll come back to phospholipids. Know that they're important. Um, and then your waxes. Waxes are important. Waxes are, for example, they are the one, like, plants have a waxy substance to them because of um, the lipids that form that waxy substance. Um, it has that sealing function that it says down there. And, like, those, those um, the waxy layer to a lot of plant leaves, it helps with the evaporation of water, right? Plants need to restore their water. They can't go out and get water. They have to wait for water to go to come to them. So if they have that waxy outside of their plant, of their leaves, it, it helps with the retention of water. I'm very sorry this lecture was boring. Hopefully it was short. I will work on my background. I will work on some exciting pictures. So next week I'm going to have you listen to proteins, and I promise I will step up my, I will step up my game just for you. All right. Deuces.